Welcome to today's mathematical meditation. I'm your host, Ted Z. Everyone knows this approximation for pi, 22 over 7, but I want to show that actually pi is less than 22 over 7, and I want to do it without using a calculator. Our options are pretty grim <laughs> if we avoid the calculator. Well, one way is... Uh, Archimedes style polygon exhaustion, so we're going to draw a lot of polygons in the sand. Another equally painful way would be calculating with infinite series or infinite products. And, uh, well, we better hope we know a calculating prodigy who can help us. But a more reasonable way would be to use the modern techniques of calculus, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you something that was discovered last century, not that long ago, and it's a proof of this using calculus. So let me sketch out the idea. Suppose we find some function f of x that has some really good properties that the integral over some uh, definite interval is 22 over 7 minus pi. It just so happens to work out that way. So that's really great if we can find something like that. And furthermore, let's uh, say that f is strictly positive on all of a, b. Well, this is really great because now the integral is strictly positive. So this is a strictly positive integral, and that implies that 22 over 7 minus pi is strictly uh, positive, and so pi is less than 22 over 7. Well, if I can find such an f, I'm done. With a little bit more thought, we see that this condition is uh, kind of, well, it's good if we have some function like this, but maybe it's too strong, so let's make it weaker. We don't really need it to be that strong. So let's lighten up on this condition a bit. Suppose f of x is non-negative on all of a, b, and that it's positive somewhere. So it doesn't have to be positive everywhere, just somewhere and non-negative everywhere. And one last thing, f of x is continuous on a, a, b. All right, so if we have these conditions, then we have this kind of situation. Uh, f might be zero, but somewhere it's positive. But because it's continuous, this area under the curve can't be zero, okay? It has to go up continuously and then down continuously. Well, in this case, the definite integral of f of x over this region is going to be strictly positive. So I need this, and this is better. It's a weaker condition, maybe easier for me to find such an f. The fundamental theorem of calculus says the following. This definite integral is the difference of f, big f, of b minus big F of a, where big F x, the derivative of big F x, is the integrand F of x. And I can write this like this, from a to b. Let's take a wild guess that if I use the interval from 0 to 1, the closed interval 0, 1, then this will work. And so with this assumption, I'm looking for this big F such that uh, evaluated from 0 to 1 like that, I get 22 over 7 minus pi. So if I can find this a big F that satisfies this condition and satisfies the other conditions that I, sh uh, I talked about, like this one, f of x prime is f of x, and that f of x has the properties that we discussed earlier, well, then I'm done. And so I'm going to show you a really crazy way that this is uh, found. <laughs> and I'm sure this was found using a lot of trial and error, and I have no idea how this was found. I'm just going to have to show you the steps involved. Uh, I mean, the steps make sense, but you're going to wonder, how on earth did anyone think of this? Okay, so, but okay. Uh, we'll just try to appreciate uh, the steps for what they are. Okay, we can start by decomposing the 22 over 7 like this. Now the 3 I can write as 4 minus 1. 
And this here, minus 1, well, I can write that here as minus 2 plus 1. And now I take this minus 2, and I can write the minus 2 as this sum of two terms here. OK, that's very nice. All right, so this is my starting point. Now let's look at the 4, the first term. I can write that as 4 times some power of x and evaluate that from 0 to 1, and that's going to give me 4 because, you know, 4 times 1 minus 4 times 0 is 4. Okay, so I just have to choose uh, the power wisely and with a lot of foresight, which I'm sure came with a lot of calculations on the part of the discoverer of this, we have the correct powers of x that we can use here. So for the first term, the 4, I'll choose a power of 1. And the minus 2 thirds term, the next term, I'll choose a power of 6, x power 6. And the next term is minus 4 thirds x power 3 from 0 to 1. It all works out if I choose these powers. 1 is a 1 times x power 5 from 0 to 1. And 1 seventh x power 7 from 0 to 1. Some of these you can see were chosen probably to help uh, get rid of the denominators of the fractions once they're differentiated. Well, we have uh, the minus pi here. We're not finished, so what about minus pi? Well, a tan 1 is pi over 4, and a tan 0 is 0. So minus pi is minus 4 a tan x evaluated from 0 to 1. There, so I have this expression, and this is my big F here. And I claim that this big F is exactly the one that I'm looking for. The next thing we can do is recover our integrand function, little f, by differentiating this big F here. I get this. Don't, rem don't forget that uh, the derivative of a tan x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now let's put everything on a common denominator. I get this, and I have factored out a x power 4. Now look at these coefficients. I have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So this is instantly factorizable. And I get this beautiful expression. And so I claim that this function, this integrand, solves my problem. And I will prove it in a minute. Let's think about the integrand f of x that we just uh, derived. Let's think about the behavior of this on 0 to 1. This part here is never 0, so it's always strictly greater than 0. This, well, it's greater than or equal to 0. This is greater than or equal to 0. I think this product here, it can only be 0 at the endpoints 0 and 1, and you can try to prove that. And we can actually take a plot of this to see what's going on. There, our guess is right. It's only really 0 at the, uh, at the end points of this interval. Now you're saying, ah, oh, yeah, but you're using a computer to plot this. You said you didn't want to use a calculator. OK, but you don't need to plot this. Just find any x0, which is strictly here, and you can easily show that this has got to be greater than 0. And then f, f of x is continuous. Nothing bad happens because this denominator is well behaved. And so therefore, the integral from 0 to 1 f of x dx, which just happens to be 22 over 7 minus pi, well, this is strictly greater than 0. And we're done. We have proved it. <laughs> pi is less than 22 over 7. But that's not all. There's a lot more we can do with f. Let's consider this denominator. When is it minimum? Well, it's minimum when x is 0. So the minimum denominator gives me something that's maximum. So I get this strict inequality on the interior. So I'm excluding the boundary points 0 and 1. 
that denominator becomes maximum when x equals to 1. And so I have another inequality, like so. So I have some interesting possibilities here. Let's put it all together. The integral of f of x has to be less than this integral here. And I have something on the other side too, like so. Okay, so we have already figured out that this is 22 over 7 minus pi. And so these two integrals on the left and right, those are easy to figure out. I leave that as an exercise for you to do. You do this integral here and you do this integral here. Very easy, just multiply everything out and integrate. So what do we, what do we get? This integral is 1 over 630, but this actually is just one half of 1 over 630. So that's 1 over 1260, right? Now let's move things around a bit. I subtract every one of these by 22 over 7. Now I multiply by minus 1. Okay, that looks a bit counterintuitive because I have these uh, inequalities pointing in a funny way. So let me rewrite that. And there you have it, quite an amazing result. We not only get the uh, answer that pi is less than 22 over 7, we get something a lot stricter than that here. <laughs> well, that was a lot of food for thought. All this was discovered by a fellow named Dalzell in the 1940s. And it's interesting to see something about pi that was not discovered by Euler. I want to leave you with some uh, mysterious thoughts to think about. I'm sure you've seen this very beautiful uh, approximation for pi. It's one of the best ones. Tell me, what do you think? Is it possible to do the above analysis and to show that pi is actually less than this using this kind of Dalzell integral method? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Well, I hope you liked this vid. So click like, subscribe, comment, send me a super thanks if you like. And I will see you next time with more interesting mathematical meditations.